Hello. Right, in today's video, this is going to be slightly different to what I normally do. Um, I'm in our cottage, which is roughly 300 years old. And we've just had a new back door fitted, and this was all boarded in. We removed it, expecting to find some pipes and wiring, but we didn't. We found a temporary beam that's been put in. This is the original, which is possibly 300 years old. This has been put in at a later date to support this top cross beam and the beam that sits behind it. Um, it's quite ugly as you can see, and we've got lots of foam packing in the side, uh, at the side of it and so on. So I'm going to board this in with some oak, which I bought yesterday. Never done anything like this before, so stay tuned to see how it goes. So this is my nice new oak that I've just been and bought. And this is the beams and the area that we want to cover up. I would have left them exposed, but as you can see, there's lots of packers, lots of spray foam, and it's not an original beam anyway. So we're gonna box it in. I know a few of you are gonna to say to me, should have left it as it is, but it really is quite ugly as you can see. So here goes with the first cut. You'll notice I'm having to cut this at quite an angle. Um, you'll see why in a second. It's to do with the beams. They sit a lot prouder at the top than they do at the bottom. But hopefully you'll see exactly what I mean in a second. Okay, so I've cut the front cover piece, which will be placed just there. That will cover this ugly beam, not the original beam. The original beam I want to keep, that matches the rest of the house, and is, and is one of the original beams. Um, this is the side piece I've also cut. That is at a slight angle. You can't see that from the angle you're at, but this part of the ceiling is much more proud than the bottom. So that's had to be allowed for by being thicker at the top and thinner at the bottom. So now I just need to fix those two together and get that fixed on. Now these spaces are massive, as much as two inches at the top, and I'm gonna use these to my advantage and use them as fixing points. I decided I didn't want any screws at the front of this piece of oak. It's a beautiful piece of oak and I didn't want to ruin it. So I decided I would use glue and I would put my fixings at the side into the spacers that I just showed you a second ago. Now in my opinion, this is the best spreader that money can buy. And it's always good to spread the glue out nice and evenly so you get a real nice fix. Now I cannot tell you how difficult this glue up was Hence the reason there's no video footage. There was, but I had to scrap it because it just looked an absolute shambles. So what you're gonna see now is the finished article with me just wiping off the glue. So what I'm doing here is I'm attaching a piece of scrap OSB to the length of the beam, as tight as I can to the beam. Then I will take two pencils and a marker pen together. The pencil will run into the grooves of the beam and the marker will hopefully leave a marker line all the way down to the exact shape of the beam so I know where to cut. Well, at least that's the plan anyway. I'm now marking the other side because as you can imagine this also isn't very straight at all. And now I shall turn that into my template on the bandsaw. Now that actually worked. I couldn't have wished for a better finish. Um, I'm super impressed with that. I don't mind saying so myself. Because as you can see, that is far from straight. So I've removed the clamps and now it's time for a test fit. It is a little bit tight but that is exactly what I wanted. I could always remove a little bit afterwards, but as you can see, I'm having to push it in at the bottom. Once that's in, I can get the top right, and it's a nice snug fit. So again, I'm happy with that. 
and now it's back to our piece of OSB template. Um, I didn't cut the other side, um, I'm going to cut it now and that's because I couldn't rely on that beam, plus the beam wasn't the shape of the new piece of oak. So I'm glad I didn't cut that because that would have been completely out. Now I can get an exact measurement by running the pencil along, I'll cut that and that should give me an exact template of how to cut the next piece of oak. And there we have one complete template. I'm now going to drill some holes in the side. The holes are spaced exactly where the spacers are between the door frame and the beam, so that will give me nice fixings. Now this is a little tip that I saw somewhere, I think my dad showed me actually. Put a piece of tape around your drill bit so you don't drill in too far, because the oak is only 20 mil thick, so I don't want to go too far, so I've marked that approximately 10 to 12 mil. So once the tape stops against the wood, I know I need to stop drilling. So with the main piece now in place, I can now test my OSB template to see if it's worked. And it has. I, again, am super pleased with that. So I'm going to transfer my template onto a piece of oak. The piece of oak you'll notice has got screw holes in it. That's because at the beginning of this video, I was going to use this piece as the front piece. And I screwed into the beams and I stood back and looked at it and thought, really don't like those screw holes. Um, so decided to start again with a new piece. I knew this wouldn't be, piece wouldn't go to waste. I'd use it for other projects just like I am now. So it's over to the bandsaw which was quite tricky with the fridge freezer next to it, which did restrict the movement a little bit with the thickness of this plank, but we got there eventually. So another test fit, um, this as I expected didn't fit exactly and that's because the beam, which you won't see from there, from left to right goes in and out. So I had to remove roughly one to two millimetres along the top section and also cut a little section out of the back of the oak in order for it to sit properly. So that's all that took was a couple of mil, it was probably two to three mil, but now it fits perfectly. So it's back to some more clamping. It suddenly occurred to me that my clamps may not fit, and as you can see, fully extended, they just about fit with about two millimeters to spare. Now I've sped this bit up quite a bit, as you can see, because watching someone glue and fixed clamps can be quite boring. So I've sped this up quite a bit. Clamps are off and it's time to sand it. I'm gonna start off with 80 grit and I'll work to 120 grit. I'd normally go much finer, but I don't need it for this. Thank you. 
So I've just noticed a tiny little nick in the front piece of oak, or oh, it's a little dig. So I've just mixed some sawdust from the sanding bag with some wood glue, and I will just apply that to the hole, let it dry, come back, sand it down. Scrape off the excess with a razor blade first of all, and then give it a sanding. And just like magic, it's gone. Even I can't see where it was. I'm happy with that, it's a nice snug fit, but obviously it won't stay there on its own, so we're going to get some screws into the beams either side. Now it's exactly the same process on the other side, but there is a difference. This beam has a bow, which hopefully you can see in this picture. I don't want to cut away the beam, so I'm going to cut the back out of the oak instead. So with the other side now completed and fixed in, it's now time to think about putting a piece across the top. So I'm going to start off by taking some measurements. I've got a spare piece of oak which I'm going to put up into the top left and mark that so that will give me the width or the depth rather. I'll do the same in the middle and the same on the right hand side. That will give me my depth of the piece of oak that's going to go into that place. Now I also know if I cut my piece square, it won't fit nicely into the gap. So I'm marking these with a pencil at the angle that the two upright pieces are fixed in at. I hope that makes sense. Hopefully you'll see what I mean in a second. I then take a measurement from left to right. And to start with, I make it slightly bigger. I could always cut it smaller. This is my test piece, and as I mentioned earlier on, I want to get the angle right, so when it butts up against the side piece, it'll be a nice snug fit. Now when I test this, it should be a nice snug fit, and it is, that's exactly what I was looking for. I now need to transfer those angles onto this piece that I'm going to be using, but I need to cut the end off first of all. So I over allow and make it slightly longer. Now the depth measurements that I made earlier on on this scrap piece, I'm now going to transfer those over onto the actual piece that I'm going to be using.
I have drilled two 9mm holes with 4mm holes in the middle, 4mm for the screws and 9mm for 9mm dowel. Now you may have noticed I've had to remove the upright on the right hand side, the boxing in that I'd done. The reason for that is this top piece wouldn't go in, I'd made it too snug. That's the fit that I wanted, but because it's prouder at the back where it meets the door frame than it is at the front, it wouldn't slide in. So I've had to remove that first of all, which is no hardship, it's five screws, then put it back into place afterwards. So with the side piece back in, I can now make some tiny adjustments. Top bit's not 100% flush, so I'm going to take the screws out, get it flush, put the screws back in. Now what I didn't mention earlier on was how hard this oak is. I managed to break two screws in this oak trying to get fixings, and I managed to break two drill bits as well. It was incredibly hard. Now you may have noticed I've actually replaced the top piece. I'd originally done it in 30mm, but it was too wide and I couldn't get the alarm sensor to fit in between there and the door. So I had to replace it with a piece of 20mm, but it was an easy fix and easily overcome. Next I decided I had to do something with this bit along the edge. The plasterboard didn't butt right the way up to the oak, and at the bottom the original beam was sitting a little bit proud. So I had some leftover oak, so I decided I would put a piece of batten in along the edge. Easier said than done, because where the beam was proud, I had to cut the back out, as you can see here, at the bottom section of my batten in. Back to the bandsaw to cut some 9mm dowel for the 9mm holes. Now a tiny little bit of glue, they really don't need much at all, and then just a fiddly bit of getting them into the holes. Now I've devised a little plan where I use a pair of fine nose pliers to hold it in place so I can hit it with a hammer, otherwise it's quite fiddly. I then give the glue a couple of days to dry and then I remove the dowels using a flush cut saw, just like the one in this picture. I then give them a quick sanding and we're all done. And this is how they look after sanding. And this is the finished result. Now I must admit, this did take me a little bit longer than expected. I think I spent two, maybe three solid days on this over the Christmas period. But I think you'll agree, it's a lot better than how it was. Um, the bits that took the time was on the left hand side, um, getting this to marry up quite nicely to the old beam. That took some real work as you can see. And I didn't get that right the first time, if I'm totally honest with you. Uh, so there's a couple of attempts there. But I'm pleased with the end result. And I think you'll agree, it looks a damn sight better than it did. So these are the before pictures. And these are the after pictures. And as always, thank you very much for watching my video. Hopefully I'll see you all again soon on part three of my new workshop. See you soon. Bye for now.